guys, I'm Erin and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you my April TBR. So in March I had a pretty long TBR that kind of ended up planning out most of my month and so in April I decided I wanted to do a just a shorter TBR and kind of leave room for a little bit more mood reading. I'm not a total mood reader and I do I can kind of stick to lists when I read but I'm not a total anti-mood reader either and I do like having some room to throw in extra things and not having my full month planned out. But again, last month was an exception since I was doing a readathon, but I'm not doing any readathons this month, so I'm not gonna be trying and planning out my whole month of reading again. So this month will be a little bit of a shorter TBR because of that. So first off, I have book club reads. So first is for the fantasy subreddit, uh, fan feminism and fiction and happily ever after book clubs. They decided to team up this month and do a joint read and that we are reading The Midnight Bargain by C.L. Polk. This is a story about Beatrice who practices magic but as a woman she is expected to marry and once you get married you get cut off from your magic so only men can kind of become these mages and she wants to keep practicing magic and so is doing it in secret but her family needs her to get married because they are poor and need an advantageous marriage to keep their family afloat so she has that pressure from her but she ends up finding this grimoire that gives her the key to becoming a full-fledged magus and so she takes that but it gets I think stolen by another female sorceress who also wants to be a magus and so her, Beatrice's story gets entangled with this sorceress and I think the sorceress is brother and so she's kind of pulled between her desires to become a sorceress, a magus, and her obligation to her family. I think it sounds pretty good. I have not really heard much about it as far as reception. I just thought it sounded really good. I have heard good things about this author's other series, the, um, oh, what's it called? The Storm Song series? So definitely looking forward to this. And while I don't solely pick up books on their pretty covers, I do appreciate them when they have them. And I am in love with this cover. It also has this beautiful dark green naked hardback. Like this is my favorite color, the shade of green, so love that as a bonus, honestly. Next is my one shelf space buddy read that I'm participating in this month over on Discord, and that is for The Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the third book in the From Blood and Ash series, and it comes out April 20th, so that will be, this will definitely be an end of the month read, and I honestly have absolutely no expectations going into this book. I really quite enjoyed From Blood and Ash, and then I thought A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire was good, but not great. I definitely didn't like it as much as the first one. So I really have no expectations going into this one. And really the only expectation I have from this one is if Jennifer L. Armitrout doesn't give us the joining, I'll be angry. And if you've read the series, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And that's literally the only thing I want out of this book is the joining. Give it to me, please. <laughs> So I'm definitely intrigued and interested in seeing how the series ends and we'll see how it goes. Next, I just have a couple books that have struck my fancy recently to pick up next month, the first of which is a holdover from my March TBR because I did get through all but two of my March TBR books. And so the, one of the ones I am carrying over to April is Call of the Bone Chips by R.J. Barker. I loved the first book when I read it last year and I definitely want to read this one soon. I mean, I this was going to be the next one I picked up in March, but just didn't have quite enough time in March. And I definitely want to read it before the third one comes out at the end of this year. This is a nautical fantasy about this world where ships are made of dragon bones, and but the dragons have all disappeared. So there's two warring nations kind of fighting over the resources because there's no more bones to make new ships. And we follow the crew of one of these ships. And I'm very excited for this. This is another just series of covers that I absolutely adore. And I cannot wait to get back to this world and eagerly anticipate the third one coming out later this year. Next is The Queen of Sorrow by Sarah Beth Durst. This is the third book in the Queens of Renthia trilogy and I read the second book in this past month and really liked it. I thought it was better than the first one. It's definitely not a series that falls victim to the kind of second book slump. And so I left the second one itching to pick up the third one. Very excited to go back to this world. There were some new characters introduced in the second one that I really liked and I'm very excited to keep reading about them in the third one and how it's just how this plot is going to tie together and I have heard this one isn't is the worst of the three which does make me a little nervous but I'm excited to pick it up nonetheless. <laughs> Next is Last Song Before Night by Alana C. Meyer. This is an adult standalone fantasy that I picked up last year and 
Uh, in this world, there used to be magic that came from music and instruments and songs and poems, and that as a concept really interests me. I've been playing musical instruments since I was five. I play a variety of musical instruments, so magic systems around music is like something that I would love to read more of <laughs> and I'm always kind of looking for. So if you know any other books that have music-based magic systems, definitely let me know. But so this one, um, the magic has been lost and after a plague ravished the world. And so in the kind of present day of the novel, the plague has returned as a result of someone doing some kind of dark blood magic to harness this dark magic power. And so our main character, Lynn, yeah, Lynn, is kind of in hiding from some consequences of something she's running from, and she kind of teams up with other, and she's a musician, and so she teams up with, I believe, other musicians and poets to go on some kind of quest to stop this dark magic and this plague that's happening. And so I've heard no one talk about this, so I've really heard no opinions on it, but I thought, I mean, I was hooked by the music-based magic system. I thought that sounded cool. And so I'm definitely intrigued to give this one a shot, see if I like it. And the last book I have that's kind of striking my fancy next month is a thriller, which is The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. This is a retelling of Jane Eyre into a domestic thriller. And so Jane Eyre is my favorite classic book. And from what few selection of thrillers I have read, domestic thrillers tend to be the ones I like, I've noticed. So those two elements together definitely have intrigued me and piqued my interest a lot. And this one, I believe Jane has been transformed into kind of more of a grittier version of who she was in the classic. Instead of being this kind of nice, genial governess, in here she is a dog walker who's kind of prone to kind of petty thefts in this fancy estate neighborhood that she's in. And I'm really intrigued by this. I have read other books. I read a young adult kind of paranormal series by this author back in like early high school that I really enjoy. So I'll be interested to see if I like her adult thriller, which is a totally different genre. <laughs> and so last up I have Reaper at the Gates by Sabbath to Tahir. This is the third book in the Ember and Ashes trilogy. I wanted to read this one in March. I had been reading one of these a month, but I had a ton of library ebook holes come in all at once. So I ended up pushing it back to get to those first since those are <laughs> due at the library and I didn't get to it in March. So I'm definitely hoping to get to this one in April. I've really been enjoying this series. I am very excited to follow some of the characters in the third one and see where this story goes. I believe I've heard this is the weakest of the books, at least the weakest of the first three. I'm not sure how the fourth one favors into that ranking, but I'm definitely still excited. I think it'll still be good and I look forward to continuing with this series. So that was my April TBR. If you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them below and I will see you in my next video.